This is like a virtual world, one of the environments to, that we have in here. It's, um, you can kind of see like the, the social part of it, people's movements and physics, it's all synced in real time. So if you okay. kind of walk up close and then just kind of give it that shooting motion. Um, wow. There we go. <laughs> First shot. First shot. That is actually kind of rare. <laughs> and then we have spatial voice, so you can start to hear people from over there. Oh. Whoa, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> we could also go to a different environment, hopping you into an NBA court. Really wild um, environments that are often very tough to get access to in, in real life. <laughs> can I do uh, <laughs> some tricks? <laughs> you can do some tricks. Um, you can kind of go behind your back and stuff. Um, okay. And then if you press that trigger when it's getting close to your hand, it'll magnet there. Um, like, you know, yeah. you, got, you, you could do some spin moves. Um, you know, they're, they're kind of doing a bunch of moves over there. Um, there we go. All right. <laughs> Let me try. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. It is September 28th, and the last two days have been all about MetaConnect. So Meta has released a bunch of new information. They're releasing the Quest 3 this fall, which is their first mixed reality headset. They're partnering with Ray-Bans to release these mixed reality glasses that use AI. Some really cool stuff, including Mark going on Lex Friedman's podcast to talk about this, and they did that in VR. And there was one line that really stood out to me. And right now we're, we're kind of sitting in a dark room, which, um, you know, is, is you know, familiar for, for your podcast. But I think part of the, the vision for this over time is, um, is you know, not just having this be like a video call. I mean, that's fine. It's, it's cool or it, it feels like it's immersive, but um, you know, you can, you can do a video call on your phone. The thing that you can do in the metaverse that is different from what you can do on a phone is like doing stuff where you're physically there together and, and participating in things together. And we could play games like this. So we had no idea that Mark and Lex were gonna record that podcast, but we did know that MetaConnect was on its way. And so we wanted to show you the very real world experiences that already exist on many of these devices. And so we did this by partnering with Gym Class VR, one of the top rated applications on the Quest. We basically went into VR with one of their co-founders, Paul, and Paul taught me how to dunk, dribble, how to really play basketball in VR. And we talked about the implications, the social implications, the technological requirements in order to put this in the hands of the masses. And of course, we also talked about AI. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you don't laugh too much at me learning to dunk. Oh, hold both of those and then vote. Oh. 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 Ooh. Ooh. Do I have the, the goggle? Oh yeah, I've got the goggle. <laughs> as a reminder, the content here is for informational purposes only. It should not be taken as legal, business, tax, or investment advice, or be used to evaluate any investment or security, and is not directed at any investors or potential investors in any A16Z fund. For more details, please see a16z.com slash disclosures. <laughs> Good to see you at the beach. I know. Yeah, this is, and then people typically go in the gazebo and that's where they hang out. <laughs> okay, should we go over and have a chat? Yeah. Talk Let's about the chat. future of VR? This is so cool. This is the first time I can say that for sure that an A16Z podcast has been done in VR. So let's let's draw this line in the sand. I hope we'll do many more. Let's do it. <laughs> that sounds great. First thing I want to ask after doing that for the first time is just, you mentioned that it's one of the most popular Quest apps currently um what goes into that like why do you think people are coming back because there are so many apps that kind of fail or people try once and then you know there's also a suite of apps that people have just never heard of yep i mean i think there's there's kind of two things um one like when we first launched it you know there was very little in the in the experience like you you, bear, you couldn't even actually move around or dribble a ball but our hypothesis was like, if you had a shared interest in basketball with other folks and we could yeah. put you in an environment with eight other people where you could hear them, they're both kind of, they're all kind of going through the same experience, they would want to come back. And that actually ended up happening. Like, um, you know, we had, we made a post on Reddit and there's like a few hundred people that tried it out. And all of a sudden they were in a discord being like, how can I move around yet? Why can't I dribble? Like they were asking for a lot of things related to basketball, but they were coming back just to chat with people and hang out with someone who might be in another country or, um, or but, but they share this common interest. And so that's definitely one of the biggest drivers um, within VR today. Like 
um, you know, most of the top 10, 13, 15 most played VR apps on the Quest, they're, they're social. It's ways to share experiences with people from around the world um, in a really immersive and expressive way. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no other technology outside of VR today that gets you as close to expressing yourself like you would in real life. Um, it's not all the way there, but it's close. Um, and that, that allows for way more interesting social interactions. Yeah, it almost sounds like social is effectively the killer app that we've been looking for with VR. And I, I mean, even on Zoom, I'm constantly thinking about the fact that like this cannot be the end state, like this <laughs> box that we have like floating heads, it, like that cannot be the best that we get yep. to in terms of communication and digital social interaction. And so you're saying yep. that basically this is a step ahead, but I'd love for you to speak to where we are in that trajectory of VR, because I mean, I think it has taken a while and I think a lot of people think we're still in this trough of disillusionment. And yep. so I guess first, would you say that we're still there? Um, and then also what will it take really for VR to be the everyday household activity or not even activity, right? Something that just integrates into your daily life the way that an iPhone yep. might, or the way that, you know, uh, you know, your computer and watching Netflix might. The expectations that people have are, these headsets, VR, AR headsets, are going to replace a smartphone, and they're going to be something you always have on. Um, it creates, you know, digital layers on top of your everyday world that um, that all of a sudden makes everything, you know, digital and it brings the internet everywhere. And I think over the long run, something like that is is going to be inevitable. But there's, um, you know, there's all these steps along the way to get there, and the way to kind of, you know, replace a smartphone. Is, isn't to just kind of build you know, a device that's great for gaming. It's a device that has value to you in all parts of your life so that you might want mm -hmm. to you know, use it in all parts of your life. So um, I think you know, the way to get there is all of these different use cases that bring you back wanting to use this device. Um, just like with a smartphone, um, you have an app for your camera, you have an app for navigation, um, all of these things that might've required special hardware before it became an app. Um, and I think with these headsets, um, what we're turning into apps are experiences. So things like mm. hanging out in, under a gazebo with someone from a few thousand miles away, you know, <laughs> getting a, you're downloading a, an NBA basketball court to your to your house. Um, you're not downloading a camera. You're downloading a whole experience. Um, and so I think the the big idea is like there's going to be an app for all of your experience. Maybe we can speak a little bit to two other things that maybe relate to the arc of VR. Yep. One is the social side and one is the technical side. Just tell me what you're seeing. Like, are, are people already adhering to this and saying this is wonderful? Or are there parents who are like, no, take that thing off. Like, go hang right. out in the quote unquote real world. The most common comment is like, just go outside. <laughs> um, or like, <laughs> why don't you just do that in real life? You'll get better at the sport. Um, and the yeah. funny part is we don't see that as much for someone playing a console basketball game or a console sports game or, yeah. or on mobile, yeah. that's that's kind of like, you know, what, what gets me excited um, isn't that, you know, VR and these technologies are gonna be replacing everyday life. Like we're already spending most of our lives on our phones, on t you know, playing games on TVs, watching content on TV. And those are just such, um, like the, the humanity and the expressiveness and how social those moments are, are just so mm -hmm. much worse than if you, you know, got off the couch and instead of learning a bunch of controller combinations <laughs> to get better at, you know, a basketball yeah. game, you're actually moving. Um, and all of a sudden that can also expand the sport and make you feel a lot more fulfilled, less lonely. You're connecting with people on a much deeper level. So I just see VR and, and, and these technologies as a way to level up these um, these really kind of like um, you know low impact digital experiences that we're getting used to and make them feel a lot more like real life right. and a lot more personal. Maybe we can jump to the technical aspect because there's been you know the Apple Vision Pro has yep. the announcement has come out. Soon we're gonna uh, hear from Meta uh, in terms of Meta Connect and what they're yep. doing next. Tell us a little bit more about what you see on the horizon technically and if you see any important unlocks that would allow us to have just you know much better experiences and allow more yep. people to want to participate. Yeah, so I think there's um, there's 
technologies that move the ball forward on use cases that we already know work in, in VR mm -hmm. and AR. Um, so new devices, uh, especially like new VR devices, like you know the next Quest, and you're, we're going to see a lot more. They can they could do a lot more in terms of performance and the resources that they give a game. So like for instance, um, like Quest Two, it's it's incredible. Like we could run an NBA court, like we got crowds, like all of that kind of stuff. Um, but it's running on on an old smartphone chip, um, and the fact that any of this is running sometimes <laughs> kind of blows my mind. Uh, we've got like customizable avatars, like you know we have you know people that can hop in and um, and connect with each other and sync that physics in real time. Um, the next devices will just allow us to create um, you know more immersive experiences. Like we'll have more resources to create larger environments, like bigger worlds, mm -hmm. like have more people in these worlds. You could imagine like a car driving by and all this kind of stuff that um, you expect from, you know, maybe console experiences, we'll be able to start leveling, leveling up these spaces, make them more social, make them more immersive. But where things get really interesting is some of the new use cases. So like even for us, um, if you have a device where you can see your surrounding environment yeah. um, and maybe the hand tracking is much better, maybe it has real time object detection, um, all of a sudden, like like you could put your controllers down um, and you could have an interactive experience with a real basketball um, and you could start mm -hmm. tracking, um, you know, how many shots you've made. You could do dribbling drills. You could have a coach uh, that's animated in front of you that we're trying to match your motion to them. So all of a sudden that unlocks a training use case, which is like a really big market um, and, a, yeah. and a deeper fitness use case. So I think piece by piece, we'll just see, um, you know, these new devices unlocking very valuable use cases that, um, I think it'll it'll give you more reasons to use the device every day and start to have it really be a replacement uh, for the smartphone as well. Maybe you could speak to some of those opportunities. I mean, you're obviously working hard on gym class and it's going well. It's one of the top rated apps in the Quest store. But what else do you think is just like an untapped opportunity given, let's say, the next three to five years of technical advancements that you see coming? You know, with a social technology like this, um, there's a lot of you know companies and Meta's doing this. They're kind of going after how do I build kind of like this big platform of open worlds where everyone can create whatever they want, um, and maybe that'll lead to this metaverse. Um, but I think the the best way to go about it, and this is kind of like the the dimension that we're going about it, and is like. Um, we're focused on one interest, which is basketball right now. And that's the reason why you download um, and then you stay for the people and the relationships you're making and kind of like the back and forth uh, interactions that you get. Um, and so I think the biggest opportunity to folks is like pick an interest and create the like the simulation experience where people can really go in and really dive deep into it and make friends around that interest. Um, mm. and make it as realistic as possible so it feels like you're having that experience. Um, and and from there, um, you know, you could expand to so many different things or just focus on that interest. And you're kind of building almost like a digital online representation of all the things that happen within that interest in real life. Like with basketball, you have fashion culture um, and people, you know, people want new shoes in here and new clothes and all that stuff. Like all of those things start to become opportunities for you digitally, you know, really just picking something specific and making it great um, and, and making it social. There's, there's just kind of like endless opportunity there within the space. Let's end off on, on a question that I feel like I have to ask in, in this era. But where does AI come into all this? Like, I feel like people think AI and VR are two separate things. But to me, as you were talking there about the different problems to be solved and the worlds to be built, that AI has to be part of this. Like, how are you thinking about that new technology integrating with what you're building? Yeah, well, when I think about AI, I think a lot of what it does is help you create more content and experiences and personalized content content mm -hmm. experiences at scale, especially with games and social media. You know, for, for moderation, there's there's systems that we have there. We have a lot of the standard things like recommendations that, that we're building. Um, and we also, you know, our art team, for instance, uses... Um, you know, generative AI for concepting and kind of designing things before before they build them. So I think right now, at least our team, you know, for the past year has been in that phase of starting to move just like, you know, existing use cases as well as, you know, as we're seeing new generative uh, tools to be able to move, you know, certain parts of the art 
experience, you know, uh, workflow mm-hmm. and engineering workflow to those tools. Um, VR though is really, really interesting because um, one, you know, you could imagine being able to create endless content. Like if you, you think, you know, a hundred years and this technology develops, um, it really becomes something of like an experience machine uh, in some ways if you're hopping right. on and you're like, whatever experience you want, um, you'll be able to have it. Uh, and maybe it's with real people or maybe it's with you know eight, you know ml you know agents that are, yes. are kind of like bots that come up to you um all of those things are ml problems and it's again very personalized that's what that's what you often want you want a bot to be able to respond to you to move you know and, and kind of respond to a scenario um to say something that that makes sense like all of those become really really interesting uh, problems to solve within a 3d space um, expanding content and things that you can do um, and then when things where things get really interesting is is really motion um, and that's where mm. we're focused on in the short term um, like the way that you move um, yeah. imagine imagine kind of like your, your dribble move um, or, or kind of like your crossover um, you know if, if you could somehow capture that, and then let you maybe control that over mobile um, and start to move like you and um, and behave yeah. like you. Like those are things that are really big opportunities, I think, in terms of where VR is going to head. Um, in the short term, I think it's all going to be about how VR connects to mobile, whether through content or gameplay, and and that's where I think Apple is in a really great spot. Um, and in the long term, I think you know you'll you'll imagine endless um, personalized content that. You know, you want to figure out how to, you know, go swimming or go fishing in in a crazy part of the world. Now there's an app for that, um, and and you could yeah. you know, play, you could progress, you could get better. Um, you know, you could you could kind of discover incredible things in those experiences. Absolutely. Um, even the note on AI, like it seems like right now you haven't gotten the avatars to like move, like the facial yep. expressions, the the mouth moving. I saw this thing on Twitter recently where you know you could record a video it would translate it into another language and then it would also modify your mouth movements with AI in- yeah. to match the new the new language. So it looked like you were really speaking French or German. And I can imagine, you know, that's like an immediate implementation to your point of just making everything look more real, to make everything feel more intuitive. Like if I do these movements, you know, it, it, the relationship between like what I'm doing and what the quest is picking up it's just yep. more intuitive. So I'm really excited exactly. for that, Paul. This this has been awesome. I think I'm going to yeah, have to so go fun. practice, by the way, and then I'll see you back on the court. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's soon. hop back on the court. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching our very first interview done in virtual reality. This very much was an experiment for us, but if you'd like to see us continue experimenting, let us know in the comments below. Also let us know if you're seeing virtual reality be applied to other industries, because maybe we'll cover that too. On that note, we'll leave you with a video of how VR is being applied to education. And then of course, we'll close out with the bloopers. Finally, the basketball star I always dreamed to be. Oh, hold both of those and then vote. Oh. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Whoa, there we go. All right, let's just. Nope. Almost. All right. Oh, yes. <laughs> Did I punch any holes in the wall? <laughs>